There's no getting around it, folks. When you study biology, you're studying sex. Now, I'm not saying that your textbook's wrong, but put the book down. This is science with talk. Science with talk. When Lauren and I discussed the traits of living things on episode one, we came to an agreement that living things must be able to reproduce. If nobody's passing their genes on to the next generation, they're going extinct. Now, neuroscientist Sama Ahmed, who you may remember from the Golgi video, studies fruit flies and how their genes lead to brains that lead to behaviors that increase their chances of reproduction. So just like you said, all animals, all creatures, like you said, uh, reproduce from bacteria who split up and become more bacteria to plants who have specialized structures that allow them to breed with each other to animals who have specific behaviors that they do that allow them to make with their own species. Right on, and you study animal behavior? Right, I'm in a neuroscience program, so I study how the brain controls behavior. How is our brain, which is just this mess of cells, this wet mess of cells, how does that give you something so elegant as us sitting here and talking? Can you tell me about some other behaviors that increase the odds of reproducing in other species. Males will typically fight other males in order to uh, um, have a say over who mates with who. So that gives you a type of behavior that allows one of the males an advantage over the other, allowing him to reproduce more easily than the other males. Another behavior is um, uh, males will typically court females, um, fruit flies to tigers to uh, birds to deer. Will, will The male will show some sort of um, display that allow him to mate with the female. I know you're a DJ, so I'm curious about this courtship using song. Tell me a little bit more about that. For example, spiders uh, will vibrate and uh, have these dances where they vibrate and it allows the female to pick up on this spider song in a way. Fruit flies will vibrate their wings at specific species frequencies that let the female know, hey, I'm, I'm around. Uh, and birds, the most obvious choice is that they sing, males will sing towards females. They have these uh, courtship songs that they do that tells the female, I'm a fit male, I'm around, and I would like to mate. And you know, mm. just, it sort of like a, a attracts females to the male's vicinity. Well, I want to hear about more about birds, but I'm just impressed that spiders are a triple threat like that. They can sing, dance, court, all at the same time. And fight hobgoblins. Right. <laughs> so sure, scientists think that for some species, singing leads to reproductive success. I got how can you be sure if it's the quality of the song that causes females to choose a given male? I thought I had a pretty good idea for an experiment. So what if I just went out into the world and I picked a zebra finch that could sing so beautifully mm -hmm. and one zebra finch that could kind of barely get out a note off tune, okay. flat, no rhythm, and then I just watch them and see which one reproduces more. So what if the male that you picked who gets that one note out is just a sick bird and he just looks floppy, right? The female might be you know, a female that doesn't care about song and just cares about how healthy this animal looks. Is he upright? Is he on the ground? Is he on a higher branch or a low branch? Like you want to be able to manipulate the variable that you care about, which is song in this case, right? So if we're talking about cause and effect, I can't say whether the song was the thing that caused the female to choose that bird. You want to set up a very clean experiment where you manipulate only the song and see what the female behavior is. Wow, okay, so what would that look like? You put a female, Put her in a box, and then on the side of the box is two speakers. And one plays a complicated, complex uh, song from, a, like you said, a, a male who's mm -hmm. heroic. And then on the other side, you play that one note belter guy, whose <laughs> weak, weak song <laughs> is simple and, and kind of boring. And then you see what the female does. In this case, in this experiment, what happens is the female is actually prefer sitting on the side of the, of, the, of the box that has the speaker playing the complicated song. So it shows you that females prefer listening to complex songs. So right. that, that gives you an... Um, but we're not, we're not there yet with just that experiment alone. All we know is that dope songs cause the female to move that direction towards right. that song. Now, we don't know if she's going to reproduce with him. That's absolutely right. Well, you can, you can uh, take it another step forward and put uh, two males in the cage with the female um, and make it that way they both can't sing. So they're, they're oh. somehow mute. And then you uh, play the songs on the loudspeakers from both sides and see which male the female chooses. Wow, so in that case, she actually would reproduce with one of them. Presumably. I haven't done the experiment. Okay, let's go do it right now. <laughs> what are we waiting for? So, but, that's, but that's an experiment you could do where you can figure out whether this one variable can control or affect this, uh, 
more complicated behavior. So I'm impressed by the whole song story. Now, do your flies make songs? Is that why you decided to study them? I decided to study flies because you can do a lot of experiments. Not just because they make six songs with their wings. Right, right. Okay. That's, uh, but you have to pick a behavior if you're, um, if you're interested in understanding how the brain controls the behavior. You have to pick a good behavior to study. And the behavior we chose is mating. Mm -hmm. courtship behavior. So what does courtship look like in a fly? You take a male fly, the second he comes out of his pupa, and you isolate him on his own, as his own uh, private yacht in, in a way. He has never encountered another creature in his life. And then what we do is we uh, put him in a room, um, in a little room, with a female. And we keep them separated with a transparency. And uh, when we're ready to do the experiment, we just pull the transparency out and we see what the animals behave like. We videotape them. Oh, can okay. we see that? I can show you right now. So you can see the, the females are on the bottom. There's the transparency paper that's uh, separating them. And uh, the males are on top. And when I'm ready to do the experiment, all I have to do is pull this transparency out and videotape the animals interacting. You'll see within seconds, the male will jump into the courtship routine. Oh my God. This is the first creature he's ever seen in his life. And he knows to initiate this complex dance. And the dance is indeed complex. The male orients taps her with his leg and starts singing, which is actually done by vibrating his wings. There's some other stuff I won't get into because it's not about fly sex. It's the fact that Sama knows how to mess with fruit fly genes, which allows him to ask a fundamental question about evolution. How does that male fly know that the female is even a member of his own species? And what sense does that fly use to figure it out? Male uh, flies see the female, they smell the female, they can taste it, taste her with uh, his, his legs. They have taste receptors on their feet, and he can hear the female. Right. So you can uh, now remove all of these modalities one by one to see what will uh, happen. So if you want to remove vision, you just test the animals in the dark. If he can't see the female, does he still mate with her? And, and it, does he? And he does. He mates with his own fem females of his own species, and he avoids mating with other species. Um, then you could do another experiment. What about smell? So you can remove the fly's nose, which are these little antennae they have on their on their heads. He still avoids mating with other species. Okay, so it's not smell that's the important thing. Right. Same for hearing. It's not hearing that's important. Mm -hmm. Only when we remove the taste appendage, uh, his forelegs, we, uh -huh. we um, remove the, the tip of the fly's foreleg, all of a sudden now we start seeing the entire courtship display towards females of other species. Whoa. And not just um, a species that are closely related, like cousin species, I'm talking about flies that are 40 million years diverged. So um, now that we know his taste, well, it can't be all of taste. There are certain um, taste receptors that we know of that take in different types of information. And uh, in the fly, there's about 70 of these receptors. If you mess up GR32, this gene, if you mutate it, now a perfectly wild type melanogaster male, a D male male, he will uh, attempt to mate with other species. So his taste information is totally fine. His legs are intact. Everything else about him is normal in a fly sense, and except for he's missing this one gene. Wow. And he'll attempt to mate with species that are 10, 20, 30, 40 million years away. You can remove a single gene from this fly, and just by removing that one thing, all of a sudden, it no longer knows who to mate with. It'll mate with any old species. Who can mate with whom is literally the definition of species, which is what makes Sama's research so cool. He's also a DJ, the creator of Carry the One Radio, and a ridiculously nice guy. So make sure to follow him on Twitter. He's at Columbo Ahmed. And click on our bonus features to see Sama talk about how he got his start in science. As for the music video, I want to give a huge, huge thank you to the two vocalists, Sydney Lorraine and Joshua Tasman, to Usher, for writing a high quality song about courtship called Good Kisser. And without further ado, Drosophila song. Drosophila song. Through these compound eyes, I done seen a lot of flies and they don't have a clue. They try to woo me, but I'm really quite choosy. Don't nobody sing a good tune. Ha. Don't nobody sing a good tune. Don't nobody sing a good tune. With the wing, wing, wing. So you wanna pass on jeans? Gotta know your song and dance routines. Zebra finch to Drosophila fruit flies. The cute guys are those who melodically croon cries. When the female inspects insects in sexual reproduction, she selects certain gents, but the Takakai's and effects. We gotta do the right spirit. See you when I come chasing by. 
Drosophila Brain cells start to fire Drosophila Wings sound like a choir Drosophila My song drives you wild Drosophila Girl, you smell so fly Drosophila Reproduction time ah, You could be the winner Such a fly creature Cause you're such a good singer I got taste cells on my As usual, it is up to you to write a special 8 bar verse 2. For full instructions, click on the music video link right over there or go to sciencewithtom.com. We're edging ever closer to 10,000 subscribers, so please, please, please click on Rosalind Franklin's face to subscribe. And remember, if you stay bored, you may be boring. See you next time. Can you tell pigeons apart? Male and female pigeons? Um, absolutely not. I have no idea. So this is something I love doing. It's just telling people that's a male pigeon, that's a female pigeon. And the, the, the way I can tell is based completely on the animal's behavior. So really? What do the males do? When they see a female, it will puff up. They'll furl their tails. They'll uh, grind them up against the, the ground as they're chasing the female around. And then they'll do this weird figure eight dance.